Hi, this is Maggie with Healthy Holistic Living and we're all aware of the concern of added sugar into our diets and our meals. But in following this subject, I found a relationship between sugar and cancer. And then an alarming statistic that I found straight from Cancer Treatment Centers of America, that one of every two men and one out of every three women will deal with this personally. And they said invasive cancer. It's too much. This is too much. It's me, my sister, and my daughter, or my brother and my son. I'm, we know these people. We all have them in our lives. And I am uncomfortable with that statistic. I'm uncomfortable with most adolescents having some type of issue with sugar addiction and then leading to cancer. I'm uncomfortable with the odds. One out of every three women, one out of every two men, it's, it's too much. So I'm ready to do something about it. And I believe that as much as we're aware of the problem, we have to look at prevention. And prevention is all about awareness and knowledge is power. So I wanna empower you with some knowledge. So cancer is just, is a cell that no longer has the ability or the control or to be controlled by the body. It no longer has that function. So something in it has been tweaked or manipulated or um, it's just malfunctioning, but it's still reproducing. So it just starts to do damage and wreak havoc on the body. And cancer's smart. Oh, uh, they are notorious for their ability to divide uncontrollably and to generate these hordes of tumors. Most of the fuel consumed by cancer cells or these tumors is glucose, which is another name for sugar. We're designed to be able to process sugar. Every cell in our body requires sugar to survive. So our bodies were designed to process sugar and toxins and proteins, and we've got all of these natural backup mechanisms and you know, nothing is ever less to just waste and byproducts and systems in the body. But cancer cells seem to require more than a healthy cell do, and they break down sugars at a much at a much faster rate. Cancer's mechanism and to quickly and efficiently metabolizing sugar is known as the Warburg effect. So in 1920, Otto Warburg and his colleagues started to observe these giant these tumors and cancer cells, and they're they're feeding on these giant, huge, enormous quantities of glucose and reproducing at a much quicker state than a healthy cell, which is answering and bringing to light this, this pondered on question that scientists have been asking of what is the difference between this process that a normal healthy cell follows with oxygen to create ATP and it divides and the mitochondria versus this cancer cell that seems to bypass any rules that a normal cell has, and it even in the presence of an oxygen where it can take the standardized route, it goes after this glucose, it goes after the sugar trail, and it produces more quickly and breaks it down more efficiently than in a normal process. So uh, in that Wahlberg effect, they're, they're, they're calling it this aerobic glycolysis, and the other significant part is that there's this trail of fermented lactate that's left behind. So in that fermentation process, it's now been able to positively link to encouraging tumor growth. In that fermentation, and that presence of yeast, and that presence of any fermentation hungers after sugar. So now I am providing this shortcut for cancer cells to multiply, leaving behind a byproduct in a trail that makes me just want more sugar. And as I satisfy my cravings or unawaringly eat just processed foods, I now create a better, more efficient way for cancer to multiply and grow if that's what cancer's doing. So it's this horrible, just, we gotta get off this cycle of feeding the cancer and then the byproduct of this aerobic glycolysis to then feed my sugar cravings to like, oh man, get off the roller coaster, get off the merry-go-round. We gotta stop. Did you know that it's also been discovered that the sugar industry buried links of, of study between sugar and cancer and sugar and heart disease for over 50 years? This is not the first time that we have seen something be unburied or come back to life or a study that was you know, pushed aside because of whatever mass quantity financial gain at the cost of my health and wellness. And that, like I said before, I am not okay with those odds. Sugar's always been in around in our world, so why now is it at a skyrocketing cancer rates? And I'll tell you, it's because it's hidden in everything. Sugar is in all of our foods, everything that's being processed, everything that's being um, 
it's preserved, all these things, we've got to be on the lookout of all of these different hit hiding places for sugar. Um, this is exciting that we get to focus on our own prevention and our own cancer treatments and exciting that we can focus on our own wellness. We can cut that statistic of one out of three or one out of two people uh, by just adding in some awareness, by limiting some of those dangerous and damaging pieces that would promote growth of cancer or create that um, environment. We have to be aware of added sugar, processed sugars, the goods and bads of sugar, when we need it, when we don't and start eliminating those things. Sugar has so many different alias names. Uh, if it's hidden in molasses or maple syrup, sucralose, dextrose, molotose, uh, brown rice syrup, juices, and um, we just gotta be really careful and start being really aware of all these extra foods that are just chock full of sugar. Sugar's being added to things that you would not even think. It's being added into breads far beyond the yeast process of making it rise and feeding the sugar to the reese. Yeast is cooked out of bread once we bake it, but we don't need to add sugar back into it. Uh, sugar's in pastas and salad dressings, or uh, it's in sauces, condiments. Condiments are huge. So I don't know why sugar needs to be in mayonnaise or ketchup desensitize your body from that sugar and you do a sugar cleanse or you detach your emotional senses from sugar, then the fruits of your life start to come alive. These whole foods and fruits and vegetables. Cucumbers are sweet. Celery's got a sweet little tang to it. Uh, herbs and spices, those all kind of bring these flavors to life and the sweetness is there. You'll get to a point, or maybe you've been to a point in your life when you can look back and go, I didn't used to like candy. Or if you drank soda, you're like, man, that is way too sweet. I don't know how I killed that Coca-Cola every day. But your, your taste buds will train with what you feed it. So we have to start being aware of where those hidden sugars are. It's not just a matter of denying yourself the pastry. We have to look deeper than that. Sugars into any of your honey sweetened hams or a lot of your cold cuts where a normal slab of meat doesn't have that sugar, but it's being used as a tenderizer. It's being used as a preservative. It's being used far beyond what the sweetness level of what we need is. So start looking out for those added sugars and here's some ideas of what else you could do. We know that awareness is key. We just have to start opening our eyes to the labels and the things that we're putting in our body and then reach for alternatives that aren't, that are good tasting and good for us. Uh, some of the good ones you can look out for is monk fruit or stevia leaves. Uh, you can look out for a uh, yukon plant it's set from South America and it's a sweet plant. So my go-tos for sure are uh, dropping those lemon and ginger in my water or lime and grapefruit with a stevia. They are refreshing. They are hydrating. I love to even do it with a whole natural sparkling uh, water so that if, if you just fancy those bubbles, you can have that. And I will share with you my sweet treat trick. Uh, I came across this company called Organifi. They've got a greens in the morning and a reds for your afternoon kick, but it's the gold. I love that they've even named it gold. Cause like in that moment where you're like, I just need some ice, I need pancake, I need, like it is gold and it just, it is a coconut milk base, so it is creamy and smooth. It's got cinnamon in it, which is that sugar stabilizer. I can drink one of those. I am good to go. And then it's got all this other stuff in it that just you just can't feel bad about. It's ginger, uh, which helps with pain and also with digestion. You've got turmeric as an anti-inflammatory. It's got lemon balm in it that's a calming agent. All of these things. So I like it hot. I, like, I will drink it hot in the morning, at night, in the summer, in the winter. I will kick the AC on so that I can drink it hot. I think it's fantastic. Uh, you can drink it cold if you want. I'd love to hear your tips on it of how you make it or I like to add extra cinnamon. That's my little thing. Um, or what else your go-tos are. Hey, here's the other really big thing. You are not alone in this. This stuff is hard. Life is hard. The whole point of healthy holistic living is that it is a holistic approach. We don't wanna pull apart the body and we don't wanna pull apart each other. So if you've got suggestions, if you've got questions, if you've got struggles, we wanna hear about it because we wanna bring the education to you. And we know that the education of the body is as unique as you are. So let us know where your trip ups are or your hiccups are or what you just need to know more information about. 
And then I invite you to keep watching for more videos. They are, we are pumping them out as fast as we can know what it is that you wanna hear. So we're focusing on ketosis, we're focusing on sugar cleanses, we're focusing on the power of the brain and, and how to, to retrain your thought process to a healthier and happy living. We're focusing on stress and the results in the body, how to kick stress, how to, I mean, the, the topics are endless and we want you a part of it.